Hi, and welcome to Trials Rising. Since this is our first lesson, we will just cover some of the basics. Let's get started and jump into the editor. Every time you start a new track, you'll be prompted to place two spline points. We will discuss spline points further in the next lesson, but for now, we'll just place two spline points anywhere by hitting the X button. All right, before we get into the controls, let's have a look at the displays we have on screen. First, in the upper left-hand corner, we have the pause symbol. This will not come into play until later when we start playing around with dynamic physics objects and impulse chains. For now, just know that at any point when working with the editor, you can test your physics and logic by hitting the left touchpad. This will also switch this icon to a play symbol. Hit the left touchpad again and it will deactivate the physics and logic and set the icon back to the pause symbol. The next item is the complexity meter. This tells you the overall complexity of your track. Once this meter is full, your track has reached its limits, and you can no longer place any more objects. You might even need to scale it back a bit in places to make sure it runs well for all users. Next, we have track layers. You can use the radial menu to access these. Hitting the down arrow on the D-pad brings up the radial menu, and then you select items with the right stick. Let's select track layers. Okay, so basically layers are kind of like folders, or groups that you can place objects and logic in. When building a complex track, you can place groups of objects in separate layers and turn them on and off to make building a bit easier. You can change the layer an object is in by selecting the layer in the object's properties menu, and you can make a new layer with the add new layer button at the bottom. Keep in mind, when you publish a track, if a layer is not visible, the items in that layer will not be published in your track. Next, in the upper right hand corner is the mini map. This map represents the entire available game world. The green dot represents where you are in the world, and the yellow triangle protruding from it represents the direction you are facing. The red and white dots represent some pre-made areas and some small landmarks that can give you a slight jumpstart at track building. But we encourage you to explore and try out different locations. On either sides of the screen, there are arrows. We'll get back to these in just a moment. At the bottom of the screen, there are a number of button icons. Depending on what you're doing in the editor, these buttons will change. Certain buttons do different things, and this display will let you know what button does what. We will go into more detail about these buttons in later tutorials. Now that we've got this out of the way, we can get down to some basic controls. You can look and move around the world using the two analog sticks. There are two states to analog movement, and which state you are in is represented by the two arrows on the sides of the screen. When the arrows are curved, the sticks work similar to a first-person game. Left analog stick moves you around, and the right analog stick looks around and moves the cursor. Clicking on the left analog stick, L3 switches you to the second state, signified by the straight arrows. In this mode, your view is locked, so the left analog stick moves you around, but now the right stick only moves the cursor, and if it reaches the edge of the screen, it will move you left, right, up, or down instead of panning the view. When moving around with the analog sticks, holding the right trigger will speed up your movement and holding both left and right triggers will double your movement speed. At any point, if you get turned around, you can hit the right shoulder button, and this will set your view back to the default position looking at the driveline. If you get lost in the world, hit the right touchpad, and that'll bring up the editor menu. Select Test Track, and that'll take you back to your driveline. One last thing is the Undo option. Hit Square to undo. You can undo up to 20 steps back, and if you accidentally go too far, you can hit the triangle to redo. Keep in mind, however, if you hit undo and then make any changes, you will not be able to redo what you have undone. 